Hey y'all, it's Amanda, and this is our first video for this week. We're going to paint four flowers in four days. So we're going to start with a daisy, and I'm going to turn my camera over my table and give you some instruction and show you how I paint with a palette knife. Um, while I'm, I've got the camera right here and you can see me, I'm going to give you a, a few little announcements. Um, when you come on, if you don't mind, tell me where you're watching from. Um, in my painting group, we have women from all over the United States and um, even some that are in other countries. So it would be great if I could kind of have an idea of where you're watching from. That's, that's going to be fun. And some of you may be close to each other and not even know it. Um, another thing, if you share the video, comment that you shared it, please. And if you're watching the replay, then just type replay in the comments for me. Um, so we're going to paint a daisy and we're going to do it with a palette knife. And I'm going to use some heavy bodied acrylic paint. I've, I've just got out my sketchbook. The rabbit's going to be loud. I've got out my sketchbook and I've already got a little bit of blue paint put down for our background. Um, but this is just going to be a, a small little piece of what you would get in a full tutorial of mine or in our group that is open right now. I've got a link there in the description for you if you're interested in joining our creative community. And if you have any questions about what it is and what we offer, then um, I'll be happy to answer those while, while we're painting. Um, so if you're going to paint with me, I'm just going to use some white, yellow ochre, probably some lemon yellow, and a little bit of sap green. So not very many colors. We're just going to paint a fun and happy, very loose little daisy. So let me turn my camera around here and get it all straightened up. Hang on just a second. Okay. So you should be able to see, hopefully, got my light shining over here. Um, let me hi everybody. I'm so glad you're all here today. Okay, the first thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna use my very used palette here <laughs> and I'm gonna put out some white this is just titanium white and some yellows and some green My knife is still covered in blue, but it's okay. All right, so I'm going to paint and then we'll chat afterwards because I have a hard time trying to talk to you and answer your comments while I'm painting. So that's what we'll do this time. We'll just paint and then I'll come back and answer any questions that you guys may have, okay? I'm going to start with some of this darker yellow and so this is yellow ochre but you can use any kind of yellow that you have on hand that's just a deeper shade of yellow and just make a little circle it doesn't have to be a perfect circle it's better if it's not and then I'm going to take a little bit of this white and put it in some green you guys are going to see how fast you can do some really cool stuff with a palette knife. Okay, and then I'm just gonna kinda swipe around that center.
And I'm going to take my brighter yellow and just put it in a few little spots. Okay, now I'm going to take my white, move it over here close to the screen. I'm going to put a little bit of green in it, not very much, just a little bit. And I'm going to start making some petals. And daisies are, they have long sort of wispy little petals petals. Do a little bit more green in that. I want it to have a shadow. That may be too much. make these over here a little bit shorter and these a little bit longer and right now it's a greenish color so and then now take just bright white Put that on top. So, if you've read my blog lately, I had a post where I was talking about how we need to save your whites for last. Can anybody tell me why we save the white for last? Does anybody know? Anybody know why? Has anybody read my blog post about saving your white paint for last? The brightest white. If you know, then share it in a comment. See how messy and almost deconstructed this is? But it's so much more fun to do it this way than to try to be so tight and precise with it. And right here, if you just Make a little flick down. It's going to make it look like there's a petal that's coming down that way. Let's do one. Let's make one come over this way a little bit. So that it's not perfect. All right, I'm going to take some more of this green that we had. I'm going to fill in. I've got some blue showing through here. I don't want that blue.
you may want to go back and add a little bit of white in your center. You want to messy it up a little bit more or add a little bit more yellows in there. You can do that. But that is a very quick and easy little daisy. And of course you can do, just like we do with our sunflowers, you can turn it, um, teaching you how to, to make it look um, turned or, or, you know, arranged in a different, a different position. Those are things that we would go, um, we would go, those are things we would learn in my creative community. So more than just the simple construction of the flowers, I also help you with the colors and how to position them and things like that. Um, let's see, you guys are trying to answer about why you keep your whites for last. Um, because I go from dark to light. I usually do. That's right. For highlights, yes. It brightens it up, yes. Um, Beth said she didn't read my post. <laughs> It adds, adds dimension, okay? Um, closest is wider. Yes, all those things are correct, but when you look at white, that is the lightest that you can possibly get. So you don't want, you didn't, I didn't want this to be uh, all white. So that's why we started with the little bit of green in the background and that gave it a little bit of a variance of color. So you could do that with a shade of purple or a shade of green or a shade of blue to give your shadows behind your white because the white is the lightest that you can possibly get. And you don't want it to be flat, you want it to have some dimension. So if you save your white for the very last, then that's going to be the brightest spots. So when you're painting white things, like a white flower, it's not going to be all white. It's mostly going to be other colors with that pop of white there just to show you um, where the light is hitting whatever it is that's white that you're painting, whether it's a dish or a vase or a flower or anything like that. So, um, yeah, there's a blog post about saving your whites for last over on my blog. Um, do you guys have any questions? We're going to do this every day. Let me turn my camera back around. We're going to do this every day, and there you are. And we're going to um, pick a different flower each time. So, today was the daisy, and What's tomorrow? I think we're going to do a rose tomorrow. We're going to do it at four. So four different flowers, four days in a row at four o'clock central time. I'm on central standard time. So um, let's see. I've got my computer over here, so I can't see if you guys have had questions or not. But um, also, my creative community is open right now. And... Um, the doors are going to close soon, but I just wanted to share with you all that um, some people have sent me messages today even and said, uh, I really like to paint. I really enjoy this, but I just don't have time to do it. And so I'm either I'm not going to join or I'm going to leave because I haven't had time to do this or I don't feel like I'm going to have enough time to do this. <clears throat> And I can understand that, but you have to make time for things that you really, really want to do. And I want to stress to you all, and I'm going to talk about this all week because it's so important to me, that art can change everything for you. If you're crafty at all, if you have any desire to do this at all, you have no idea what you could possibly do with this. I've got several ladies that are in the creative community that didn't even know they could paint. 
and um, watched one of my free tutorials and tried it. And now they're, they have a business. They are helping um, to support their families. They have found something that is, is um, so exciting and fun that they didn't even know they were missing. So when I started doing this, I, I started doing it for entertain, entertainment, <coughs> sorry, and just to have something like a hobby to do. And so I didn't start out doing this to, for any other purpose, really. But now, now that I do it and share it with other people, and I can see what a difference it's making in their lives, this is so much more than a hobby. Um, even if I didn't get paid to do this, I would still want to do it. I would still paint. I would still share. I would still encourage other people. Maybe not on this level, but um, it, it makes a huge difference in your life. And um, so if you think that you don't have enough time to try it, I would just encourage you to just carve out five minutes a day or just a few minutes on the weekend if that's all you have or even if you don't do anything but watch the videos um you're gonna learn things from the videos and it's it's gonna it's gonna become contagious and you're not gonna be able not to do it so there's some people that joined our our group and they just painted for days and days and days non-stop and then they were like what am i going to do with all these paintings i did oh i could sell them they turned it into something that actually made the money even if all you do is sell it so that you can buy more paint supplies because that's what i started doing to begin with i remember the first time that i sold some things and i had enough money that i could go to michael's and buy a bunch of, of supplies I was so excited about it. I even took a picture of my supplies and shared it on my Facebook page because, and said thank you for buying my artwork because you're helping me to buy supplies so that I can make more. And so there are just so many opportunities that I don't want anybody to miss. And um, honestly, I started the group um, for financial reasons. I was thinking this would help my family, and it does. But now it's so much more than that because the ladies that are in our group are, I, I get to watch them grow and learn things and um, experience things and share them with all of us. And we all just help and encourage one another. So um, as the week goes on, I have a few stories of different ladies that I'm going to share with you. And, um, and we're all, all different. Everybody is coming from a different place having different experiences different backgrounds some are art teachers some have never painted before in their lives some of them have a business some of them just do it for fun some of them are um, older some of them are younger so and but everybody's benefiting in some way whether it's just giving you a hobby or something that you can do to help you to relax to help you to get your mind off of all the anxieties and problems that may be in your life right now. There's some people who are, um, they're using their artwork as a type of therapy. And, um, and I think that's great. I think I shared yesterday and maybe the day before there were two different articles about how much creativity helps your mental health. And, um, and so there are just so many ways that you can, you can benefit from, from being in our group, from learning, just learning to be creative and making time for it. So when people say, I just don't have time for this, I want to really, really encourage you to make some time for it because it's, it's really important and um, it will change your life. But I hope that you're gonna, gonna follow me every, um, every afternoon at four and we're gonna do a different flower and I've got hydrangeas, sunflowers, and roses are what I have coming up next. This is what I have planned, but I'm a little spontaneous. Sometimes I change things at the last minute and decide that something would be much better. So um, let me look and see if there are any questions here. Um, 
Thank you, Sheila. Uh, Judy says she paints at her own time and speed. The lessons are online and you can go back and work on past lessons and she loves it. That is great. Um, Lori says, have you talked about using other people's artwork as references and how to stay away from copying? Yes, there's a whole uh, month that we talked about inspiration versus copying in my creative community and I have a whole lesson um, it's a little series that helps you helps walk you through how to find inspiration and turn it into your own your own style your own artwork so yes that's in the group um, so. Tracy said she's been concerned about the time factor but she's sticking with it I'm glad um, and that's another thing there's no time limit nobody's gonna be behind I've had people to tell me that too I'm, I've gotten behind and so I feel like I need to just quit and nobody's gonna be behind if, unless you think that way um, the way that that everything is set up is there are just a, there's a library of lessons there are just tons of different things you can choose from which may look a little overwhelming to begin with, but all you have to do is click on the first one. You just start with the first one and then move through them or start at the bottom and move up. And nobody is, um, nobody's behind because there's no right or wrong way to use the videos. You can use them in any order you want to. You can just go through and pick one that looks fun and paint it. Or you can go through chronologically and start back in September of 2017 when we started and move through them slowly um, that way. But we, we have a new video every Friday, but you don't have to do the video each Friday. You can do any video you want to, anytime you want to, and you don't have to do them all. Um, or you can just watch several of them and then pick one that you want to actually try and paint it. Um, you're welcome Lori so this was day one of four flowers in four days and um, like I said I want to encourage you not to think that you don't have time for art this took us what 10 minutes to do this one little flower I've been talking a lot more than I painted so if you just get a sketchbook Get some paint and one palette knife. That's all you need. It's just one of these and some paint and anything that you have on hand that you can you can paint on. So if you'll just commit to a few minutes a day and you just practice a little bit at a time, it's going to get you motivated to do it more often and it's going to help you in so many ways there's there are just so many ways that it can help you if you'll just allow it to so um thank you guys who who shared and um if you're watching the replay if you have questions you can can type them and i'll come back and, and try to answer them then but we're going to do this every day at four o'clock any other questions that i may have missed and i'm sorry i've got my camera set up over here but my computer's over here uh, let me see. I'll move the camera back over the flower one more time so you can see it. Maybe. There it is as it dries. And I guess I will see you guys tomorrow at 4 o'clock. Thanks for being here and commenting and sharing and being so supportive. And I will see you guys next time.